the, the turnaround for you guys defensively from week one, from week one to week two? Uh, well, we just we recognize our problems, and we got a bunch of guys who are uh, self critique themselves, you know, and um, they accept the coaching. We pointed out exactly what we weren't, weren't good at, and we attacked that at practice. You know, we don't have a bunch of soft guys who can't take the coaching. We tell them exactly what it is we need to fix, and then we work towards that. So that's what we did. How important was it for the, the guys up front to kind of set the tone, and how much is that going to be maybe the blueprint for you guys going forward with the guys up front you know, setting that tone? It starts up front, and, you know, we hear, we hear what people are saying about us. Like I said, we got a, a bunch of guys who accept that criticism, and then that's not who they are. They want to correct it. You know, they want to be firm at the point and stop the run. At, you know, so they take it personal. We take it personal. You know, it starts up front, man, and that's what they've been doing, man. Striking blockers, being more physical, running to the ball. We play with great effort. You know, there's no such thing as missed tackles when everybody's running to the ball. Your group has had a pretty deep rotation here early in the season. Has that been good for morale just in, in your group? Absolutely. They, I said it from day one. Selfish guys can't play for me. But guys that want to play for the man, man next to them and play for the team, they can play for me. So we don't have, you know, 44 has done a great job, and he's our starting buck right now. And, but it's competition. Everyone's going to play. Everyone's going to eat. And if you're selfish, you get out of the way. But I don't have one selfish guy in my group. We all love seeing each other. Make plays, and that's how it's going to. And it's been a benefit for us. You've been yeah. on the you've been on the A side of a bunch of like rivalries before. Mm -hmm. How does the prohibited favorite match sort of the underdogs' emotion and meaning? Colorado State comes to this game, and this is about respect for us. How do you guys match what you know is like their Super Bowl? It's about respect for us too. You know, they ain't the only ones trying to gain some respect. We're gonna gain some respect too. We hear it. We hear people saying that. The strength of our team is our secondary, and we're really good in the back end. But we hear that. You know, it, it's about respect for them. <laughs> it's about respect for us. We're going to start fast. We're going to run to the ball, and we're going to strike them for four quarters. Going back to the TCU game, you shared an emotional moment with Coach Prime on the sideline. Yes. What was going through your mind towards the end of that game, and um, how did that all ensue? Um, what was going through my mind was my mom. I lost my mom a couple of years ago. And uh, early in my coaching career, you know, I worked, I struggled, you know, and she helped me. She helped my wife and I, my babies, my kids. She was there for us to kind of pick us up when things got hard. So when I'm on the receiving end of, hey, we're winning, I have my room, things are looking more on the up and up, she's not here. So I was just thinking about her. That's all that was. Um, I wish she had been there to watch that, but she was, and I felt it. So that's all that was. Yeah. Coach Sadal Smalls was able to get some pressure last week. How's he kind of come along since he arrived? He has. He's developing. He's embracing the hard coaching. And he's attacking his weaknesses. These guys need to realize that if you don't attack your weaknesses and try to perfect what you're not good at, then those things will be your downfall. We, we're not practicing on what we're good at. We're practicing on the things we're not good at. And that's what each and every guy has to realize. You know, we got bona fide pass rushers that are not good in the run game. Well. You got to get good in the run game. Be complete football players. And I think that's what Seville wants to be is a complete football player. He's attacked every day, and we're proud of him. Coach, uh, Jordan's obviously a very good player. Yes. Uh, then you sit here and listen to him. Like, oh, he's, he's a very smart player. He's Absolutely. He's a great player as well. Um, how much do you enjoy having him in your room, just uh, not only his skill, but his leadership ability and the experience he brings? Man, I love it. You, I mean, once they start policing themselves and holding themselves to the standard, we'll be really good. But Jordan, he watches – Man, he's up here late night watching tape. The more tape he watches, the, the more he studies his opponent, the faster he can play, which will ultimately, the more plays you will make. And he, he practices and he approaches this thing like a pro. You know, he's been a part of big time games and he knows what's required of him. He knows in three or four months, <laughs> he won't be in college anymore. So you gotta do extra. And the guys that do extra without me pushing them, it's a beautiful thing to watch. It's like poetry and emotion, man. Do you think that's made an impact on other guys in your room? Absolutely. He He's a leader. He's a leader. He's growing into a, a better leader. So he he brings Arden along, D.V. Ayers, Kyrie, even the little freshman, Victory and Tajay. You know, they're, they got a long way to go, but if they can see guys, older guys, putting in that work and then on Saturday making the plays, it just goes hand in hand in what we're trying to teach them. As a, as a coach, I know you're trying to prepare for each game the same way, but do you take the time to – 
maybe learn why these rivalry games, first Nebraska and now CSU, are, are so important to the fans around here and the football alums? Um, yes, yes and no. I, I hear the rivalry. I've been a part of rivalries, you know, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Georgia, Florida, you know, Texas A&M and whoever, you know. I, we got to go out and play our style of football at the end of the day. The rivalry is great, but it's a faceless opponent. The next team is up, and we got to play hard and play our style of football. But I need to get into learning the Colorado State Colorado rivalry. I don't know much about it, but I just know they come in here trying to gain respect, right? <laughs> we are too. With all the fanfare and everything that's surrounding this program now, how do you guys make sure you're keeping the main thing the main thing? You know how? Because all those people were just against us a month ago. We don't listen to the rat poison, man. It's just rat poison. Right? You, our guys know that as soon as we make a mistake, those same hands that are cheering will be the ones pointing down on you. Those same people. So the people in this program that really care about us are the ones we care about. The opinions of those people are the ones that matter. Not the noise, not the ones that are saying we're this and we're that because <laughs> they'll turn their back on you just like that. Have they you, know that. Have you checked some guys? Have you seen some guys maybe read the press bulletins? Have you checked some guys? No. no. Yeah. They, they, we've been through the struggle so long. So we're still in the struggle. We're still grinding. Still got so much to prove. I don't think our guys are reading the press clippings. And I mean, if they do, we'll check them. But no, I haven't. I haven't. They're hungry. We're hungry. What does an early turnover do for the, for the defense? Oh, my God, man. It's, uh, that's why we're in it to get the ball back to our offense as many times as possible. And that's what we need to create. We need to create our identity on defense uh, of getting turnovers and getting the ball out. And that's what we're going to try to do this weekend. Did you see that energy switch this past weekend against Nebraska when you guys were able to get that early fumble recovery? Yes. Uh, well, I, wouldn't, I wasn't really paying attention to them as much as us. I just seen the excitement in our guys and the fire and the passion and the desire. And I knew, man, they in for a long day because our boys were, were ready. When did the guys find out about the turnover thrown, and what was kind of their reaction to that? Shoot, I think they found out when we walked out on the field. I, I loved it. It was that was awesome to see. That's pretty cool, man. It's really cool. It's incentive for those guys to have it plays, get the ball out. I love it. I love watching those boys sit in that big throne. They deserve it. They're kings. They're young kings. They need a throne to sit on. Thanks, coach. Yes, sir. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Thank you.